Welcome to Let's Discuss with Lance Hall. Happy to have Pete Silk from Iron Savior Skyping in from Germany tonight, loud and clear. How you doing, Pete? Hey, Lance, I'm doing pretty good. And as we just talked about, uh, sound quality is brilliant. Love it. Amazing stuff. Now, I've come up with a new way to start my interviews, and I'm hoping you'll roll along with me, because I always had trouble starting, and I thought this way was pretty cool. So you ready to go with this? Yes, yes, I'm ready. Let's, Just, uh, let's, let's start. Let's take an old-fashioned trip to the music store over here in the States. I'm in the mood for some new metal, and I'm, I'm going down through the racks, and I've gotten to the eyes, and I'm by the iced earth, and the impellatory, and the Iron Maiden, and I come across Iron Savior. And I see this new CD there called Kill or Get Killed, and I pull it out and I look at it. And the first thing you know I, I see is this Iron Savior. Can you tell me where the name came from? That's the first thing that's going to grab me. Well, I mean, the, the name um, it goes back to a, a science fiction story that I came up with, to be honest. And uh, in brief words, it's, uh, it's a massive spaceship which saves Earth. Okay. Like this, very simple, and it's the iron savior because it's made of iron and steel and all that uh, titanium stuff. I thought iron is very fitting and mm -hmm. savior also, and so because those are appear to be words of power to me, yeah. I thought it's a good idea to call my band like this. Absolutely <laughs> perfect. Uh, that's great. Um, and next thing I look at is the name of the album, "Killer Get Killed." Can you tell me about that? Well, yeah, um, also that, if you look at the history of Iron Saviors, let's say starting from landing, um, we always used um, titles for the album who are cool, of course, but um, um, this time I felt it needed to be a little bit more, yeah, let's say, let's say aggressive. Um, that is because um, you see this title, and if you hold this CD in your hand in this uh, record store we're just in, mm -hmm. you see this this evil monster also looking at you with a big, big blaster in its hand because it's a real evil dude. Mm, you know? Right. And that's why this album is called Kill or Get Killed because that is what this guy is living. Okay. He kills or he's getting killed, and of course he prefers to kill. <laughs> yes. All right, so you answered my next question then about the album art, which is very cool. Now I've taken it home and I've played it, and my ears are still ringing. There's no ballads on this album, Pete. No ballads at all. No, that's right. I mean, we used to have ballads um, on the previous albums, but this time I didn't feel like a ballad too much. And yeah. since there's, uh, there's no rule, I, I don't think that I'm... Uh, that I'm uh, that I'm bound to, uh, yeah, right. yeah. So that I have to put. put the, I don't think there's a law for our for metal bands to have ballads uh, on right. their album, yes, uh, which I be, would be violating. I thought, okay, <laughs> we'll leave, we'll leave the <laughs> we'll leave the ballad out this time, and I put this uh, epic um, until we meet again thing instead. Yes, <laughs> that was what I'm, I'm going to ask you about in a little bit. I mean, that was the thing I was saying was it's going to be just a pedal to the metal album. Um, just fantastic stuff. I also noticed on the Japanese, uh, you've got a couple of bonus cuts. You've got a cover of Sin City and a cover of Run To You by Brian Adams, which really intrigued me. What, what got you to cover a Brian Adams song? Uh, well, I mean, um, the, the Sin City cover, it was pretty clear I wanted to do that. Um, I had this idea a year ago also, and I thought, well, yeah, it's a cool song. I really like this one. It's uh, one of the mo not so much known songs of ACDC, and so I thought it's going to be quite interesting. And besides that, uh, Bond is not singing it too high in this one, so I can do it pretty good. Right. And, um, well, just uh, when it came to do... The funny thing is, when I was uh, doing the album, in the end I realized, huh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, because Sin City originally was planned um, to be the Japanese b b bonus track. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it appeared to me that the album might be a little bit short, so I need to generate something more. And uh, there was something, a very spontaneous idea. I listened to, to this song on the radio. And I thought, yeah, well, well Brian Adams, not, uh, of course, not my all-time favorite guy, but he has definitely his moments, and Run To You is a cool song, so let's do it. It is. I, I agree. That's probably my favorite Brian Adams song, is Run To You. I uh, really like that one. So <clears throat> Now let's get into the tracks that, on, on, that you did. Eternal Quest was probably my favorite track on the entire album. I loved it. 
Can you tell me a little bit of what went into making Eternal Quest? Well, Eternal Quest, um, let's put start maybe lyric-wise, because it has, it, it, when I composed the song, it has this, uh, uh, well, this, this melancholy feeling to it, you know, mm -hmm. it's, uh, and um, so I thought, uh, it created some pictures in my mind who were somehow related with uh, um, the, 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 the song from, from Titancraft, um, Beyond the Horizon, it's about, uh, and actually this this very idea of this, let's say, let's say mini story within the Iron Savior world, um, also started out on the landing, and um, it's about a poor guy who is going to war and away from his beloved family and is trying to come, fight his way back home ever since. And, well, on the Eternal Quest, he finally makes it, he made it home, but mm. home isn't there anymore, you yeah. know, so poor guy. And mm. so he, he, the quest continues eternally, forevermore. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Stand up and fight. I know, yeah, yeah, I thought the the whole um, atmosphere of the song was for spitting this uh, this uh, this lyric approach nicely, and so the, I did it. <laughs> very good, very nice. I, I, that, was, that was probably my favorite track off the whole album. Um, stand up and fight. Just a great metal anthem. Um, is that what you were going for on this one? Just a, a you know a a message there. Of, of yeah, never giving up. Actually, there there actually is a message to be honest, because um, um, a friend of mine, um, actually a couple of weeks or months ago, asked me, Pete, why don't you why don't you never write any political songs? And I said, well, because I don't I'm not a politician, I'm an entertainer. But uh, uh, you know, I mean, we have as you know, probably we have some 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 trouble with pro uh, some problems here in Germany with. Uh, right forces rising up again and this is a kind of like a little bit of a statement against uh yeah okay stuff like that yeah so you gotta stand up and fight if the time comes the video you know, for that you song cannot, you cannot just sit there and, and look at things happen and let other people do the work you have to sometimes you have to show courage and just do Things. Absolutely. Just stop things. Make the word better yourself. That's exactly the message I've been trying to get to my daughter lately. You know, she's involved with things over here, and I said, "You've got to go out and do, and get engaged with people and do things." You know, so yeah. the the video for that song <laughs> is brilliant. <laughs> Carpool karaoke. Um, <laughs> I love the humor that you guys put in your videos, both in the stand up and fight video. And the killer get killed video where you're, you're talking in the serious voice and there's the subtitles underneath and everything, great humor and all of that stuff that, that, that I find. <laughs> yeah, the reading, uh, yeah, the reading part is the best for me to be yeah. honest. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you guys have that much fun all the time? Is that just an extension of the of the band? I mean, I'm well, sure you have your yeah, serious moments, much. but I mean, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, this this shows pretty much how we are. I mean, we all have a good sense of humor, and of course, humor. And uh, laughing together is very important, I would say. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. If you're not having a good time, you know. Um, sinner or Saint, the thing that jumped out at me was just killer, killer guitar solo. What's the approach you take to doing a solo like that? Is it all done in like one take, or do you do a couple and then piece them together? Sometimes this and sometimes others. Um, since I don't, I don't, you know, I'm I'm not the I'm not the greatest uh, lead guitarist in the world. I mean, I I know I can do pretty well, but I also know my limits. So most of the time, it is stuff that I sort of like assemble, you know, mm -hmm. uh, play lick here, lick there. But of course, uh, I cannot, I cannot, uh, I have to, I cannot do it too hard, you know, because mm -hmm. sometimes. I have to play these solos live when we perform the songs, right. you know, so, <laughs> so I cannot make them too hard. I still have, they still have to be playable for me, mm. and uh, yeah, but that's what I usually do. Usually I, I, I play a couple of, uh, st when I start recording solos, I play a couple of, uh, uh, play through the part a couple of times, uh, record like four or five tracks. I listen to it, pick some stuff out of it, <clears throat> and uh, assemble it together. And then once I have a pretty good version, then of course I do some fine tuning and correct some some 
dead notes here and there so that mm-hmm. everything is really nicely and nice. and in place and it sounds like I'm a hell of a guitarist. <laughs> <laughs> Which you are, you are. Don't sell yourself short. You are. Um, Heroes Ascending. The note I have beside this is what a buzzsaw of a song. I mean that you know that that's metal on steroids right there. Great, great yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's very awesome. I love this one. It's definitely also making its its way into our live set uh, because it's nice. I love, the, I love this. I really love this one as well. Yeah. It's really, especially the the middle part with the with the heroes ascending. I mean, how 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 more? There's not more. You know. It's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love this. And uh, never stop believing. Uh, great message. I just I love that tune as well. Great, great tune. Well, if you have a family, and you obviously have, otherwise you wouldn't tell me about your daughter, then you understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's, not every, that's not given to everyone, so I know that this one might be um, a little controversial, and there, of course, some other people say, wow, how cheesy can you be? But, uh, well, most of the time, people are saying that who, well, probably don't know what we, we are talking about, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. You recorded this at Powerhouse Studios, which is, of course, your studio. Um, so it must be great just to be able to just hop right down anytime you want. Or is that a blessing or a curse? No, it's it's pretty much a blessing. It's, um, it's It never has been a curse for me because um, I learned my lessons not to sit in the studio. And, uh, you know, because I am a family guy and... Um, when it comes to dinner time, <clears throat> then I just leave the studio and leave everything behind, close the door. And um, the good thing is that I really have a short way to, to work, and um, I can sit there in my underpants if I want to. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, you, you've been involved, of course, in Iron Savior since 1996 and a bunch of other bands and stuff. What do you do when you're not doing music? Do you have any any hobbies that you know when you need a break from music, or do you, is it all music, music? It's music, music. Um, well, my hobbies, <laughs> or, or or my my other life, of course, is my family. I have I have three daughters. Two of them are already grown up and moved mm-hmm. out, but uh, the, the one is still there. And uh, I have a pretty big family, uh, you know, and I uh, really take my time for. For that, mm. and um, well, if I don't do family, I most of the time do music. Of course, <laughs> well, I mean, I'm 50, I turn 55, so this year, so of course, I go to the gym and have to work out, kind of like uh, stay in shape. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, I have a dog which wants to go out sure. a couple of times a day, and well, that's it's pretty time consuming and, and and filling and pleasing. So there's not more I I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much need. And I do a lot of vacation. I must admit, I really do a lot of vacation, and that's where, that's where, a good good amount of our money we earn goes mm. in having great vacations. <laughs> nice, nice. I see. Speaking of vacations, and we're, we're going to talk tours now. I see you're doing the Full Metal Cruise in uh, late April. Steel Panther, Vicious Rumors, Thunder Mother on that one. Do you have plans to tour beyond that? You didn't see a whole lot listed on your page. No, uh, most of the dates we are still working on because they are more planned for the for the second half of the year. Because um, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this the, the ship, and then we have uh, another festival, and then uh, we have to we have to stop because I need to, I need a little surgery on my shoulder. It's not very, it's nothing serious, but mm-hmm. a little something needs to be done. Okay. And so I wanted to do things safe, take a couple of weeks off. And so uh, most of the other life activities are planned out for, for the second half of the year. And uh, well, I mean, we have a lot of uh, stuff which is in the making right now and should be, appear on the, uh, uh, on the web page. Nice. Now, as I, soon as it's uh, as it's finalized. <laughs> am, am I correct in thinking? Isn't that the latter part of the summer and the first part of the autumn? Isn't that when when a lot of the festivals crop up over there in Europe? Yeah, yeah, and uh, well, we we also we are attending on a couple of festivals, but uh, some festivals they haven't started their promotion yet, so we have to wait and until they they say okay, green light now, you can start, and. Um, but uh, on the other hand, um, festivals are one nice thing, of course. But on the other hand, um, if you if you attend a festival, of course, people look at you and have a good time. But uh, well, then comes the 
the headliner or the co-headliner and they have even more fun and they well they probably think about having good time with our area as well but what what sticks on their mind is of course the, the let's say the, the big freeze on, on 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 a festival like this yeah so it's it's always a good thing to perform at festivals of course but i think for us it, it's it's more important to to grab people by the balls um, in club shows where we play on our own stage and we play in, in, in them. Well, when, well, when we do that, there are always a couple of people who come to the show afterwards and tell me, well, well I never heard of Iron Savior before. Um, go here before a friend uh, took me and uh, really like your stuff. Or some people just are uh, here by accident because there was nothing else going on in their, in their town and they got bored. Uh, whatsoever, and, and, and that is uh, how you gain new fans. Yeah, more I think than, than than on a festival. Absolutely, you get that little bit more intimate, intimate one-on-one uh, -on -one type there. So yeah, yeah. yeah stuff. Exactly. Going back in time, I read you started out playing piano and then bass at an early age, but ended up switching to guitar. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I mean. Um, well, I started playing piano with the age of eight, you know, and I wasn't thinking about too much of what... It was just my, my parents thought that playing piano was a good idea, which actually is, was true. It was a good idea because uh, um, it provided me with at least a basic idea what music or playing music is. Yeah. And... Uh, <clears throat> Well, I started playing bass because um, well, as a child I didn't know what, what what the instruments were called. And I was sitting in the car with my father, I still remember that moment. And it was, the music was playing and and, uh, and when the lead guitarist started playing, I said, yeah, this is what I wanted to do. This is what I want to do instead of piano. Please let me do this. And he said, aha, you, 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 you're talking about bass guitar. And I said, yeah, yeah, because I didn't know right. what the difference between. And so I started playing bass guitar, and after half a year, I realized that bass guitar is not doing this, what I wanted to do. Right. You know, they stop doing this lead guitar shit. And so I switched from bass to <laughs> to, to guitar. guitar. <laughs> did, did it come, did, did any of this come fairly easy to you, or was it something you had to really put some time in and work at? Well, actually, nothing in life comes easy to me. Um, I always have to put work and energy into stuff that I that I want. And yeah, of course, I invested quite some time in playing mm -hmm. guitar and uh, and quite some energy. And yeah. Um, yeah, I'm I'm a I'm an okay guitarist by now. Uh, okay, lead guitarist. I'm a pretty good rhythm guitarist, I'd say. Mm. Um, and uh, well, it's 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 a matter of uh, practice. And um, and also, I must say, the right kind of practice. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need it, it, you. You don't because I know a lot of guitarists who are really faster with the fingers than me. Mm -hmm. um, maybe can play more impressive stuff, but they can't play rhythm guitars because they never rehearse rhythm guitars. Mm. And well, I'm, I'm, a, a song, especially a metal song, of course, there's this let's say 20 seconds of impressive guitar solo but the rest of the song is rhythm guitars and hey man if you suck on rhythm guitars the whole song sucks exactly if you suck on lead guitars ah okay also not great but well not that bad you know <laughs> but uh, if you suck on rhythm guitars you can't play then this is this is this is the whole worst worst mm. ever Right. How did you get into singing? Was it was it sort of by nobody else was there to sing, or just something you, you developed or enjoyed, or? Well, I mean, I uh, also started singing when I was eleven. Uh, so I started. Well, I was singing along to to the music I was listening to, starting out with Beatles, of course, the status quo, yeah. cool, and then uh, later on the Sweet and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, I was sing just singing along to it, and uh, at this at this age, you don't have you don't. You don't think of that this is something you're gifted with or only you can do or and, and other people cannot sing. You, you don't think about it is at all. And right. when I started uh, uh, doing Gentry of uh, the first band um, together with Kai, hmm. um, well, I mean, whoever wrote the song was, was entitled to sing it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. 
So once again, talking with Pete Silk of Iron Savior here in Let's Discuss with Lance Hall, their new album, Killer Get Killed. Now, I've seen a bunch of different release dates. Is it out now? Is it coming out? This is where I've been very confused. <laughs> it is out. Uh, it, is, it, out it came out uh, last Friday on the 15th okay. here in, uh, uh, in Europe. It, it was supposed to come out on the 8th. But, um, yeah, unfortunately, DHL lost a bunch of uh, signed autograph cards. Uh. <laughs> and so AFM wasn't able to, um, to, to have the, 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 the fan boxes, uh, the special editions, uh, ready in time. And so it was better to have the thing uh, postponed for a week and then have everything in place and ready. So, uh, and so that's, that's why uh, we... We were we were a week we're running a week late here okay. in Europe, but good thing is if um, if we wouldn't have been running a week late, there wouldn't have been uh, um, the Star and Fight video. So because that was something we came instantly up with when I said, okay, um, this is something we need to do to shorten the wait for all the fans out there. Cool. And while well, the Japanese they were lucky this time, they got their release uh, uh, I think by the end of February um, because there was. Well, I mean, for the schedule of uh, my record company in Japan, it right. was they wanted it to have it at this point, and uh, well, cool. and now the states are always the last in line. I don't know why, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it's worth the wait. Um, once the album "Killer Get Killed" it's out on AFM Records, it'll be coming out on AFM Records over here in the states. Um, so look forward to that. Um, Dustin's been working it pretty good, um, so we want to give him a big thank you for setting this up as well. Absolutely. Pete, I always like to end my interviews with just some, uh, I call them silly questions. Hopefully these are questions you've never been asked before. Sound good? Yeah, let's try. Uh, would you rather be on a deserted island alone or with someone who never stopped talking? Uh, I'd say the, the second. Okay, someone who never stopped talking. First car you ever bought with your own money? Uh, uh, golf. Okay. Uh, given your choice of household duties, would you rather do the dishes or the laundry? Dishes. I love doing dishes. <laughs> I find it kind of therapeutic. I put my music on and I just do them. Later yeah, yeah. It's, it's really cool with the warm water and stuff. I love doing dishes, All right. honestly. <laughs> Late at night and you're hungry, what are you going to grab for a midnight snack? Cheese uh, salami. Okay. <laughs> Favorite toy growing up as a child? Um, oh man, favorite toy growing up as a child? Oh, I had quite a lot of toys. <laughs> oh, well, oh, no, no. Um, Carrera Trex, you know, if you have that. Was racing cars? Yep, yep, okay. Well, stick yeah. with your childhood for one more. If you could go back in time and eat one of your mom's home cooked meals, what would you pick? Um, it, it's spaghetti. Spaghetti? All right. Uh, spaghetti bolognese. Yep. Really nice, yeah. Okay. Uh, last one, and this is the one we have the most fun with. If they were to make a movie of your life, who would you have play you in the movie? And it's your movie, your life. You can pick anybody. Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Pete, it has been fun talking to you tonight. Once again, Pete Silk from Iron Savior here in Let's Discuss with Lance Hall. New album, Killer Get Killed, out on AFM Records. Ten tracks. It's killer. Pedal to the metal, metal. And uh, come, oh. I come highly recommended. Lance, it has been a pleasure talking to you uh, again. And, uh, yeah, uh, have fun enjoying Killer Get Killed, everybody out there. It's, it's really a good one, I'm going to say. It's really one of my favorite Iron Saviors. Iron Savior albums, and nah, I think it really plays in the league of the debut and unification, to be honest, to me. Excellent. Pete, enjoy the rest of your evening. You too, man. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Ciao, tschüss, cheerio. Cheers. <laughs>